thanks for being here. Would you stand and let's worship together? song that might be new to some of you, uh, but this month we're starting a series going from the journey from Exodus all the way to Joshua and watching as the Israelites through their great decisions and a lot of really bad decisions, but learning from them on that, on that journey. And it reminded me as we were looking through and as we were, I was looking for songs this week of that feeling that we get when we celebrate what God's done in our lives, that feeling when we choose to reflect, when we choose to see God where he was and thank him and celebrate him for that. Now this song definitely has some more energy than maybe what you're used to. And so I encourage you, whatever worship looks like for you, engage in that. Worship is emotional. And I know some of us, I have a friend who emotions are not his thing. He would prefer not to.
worship is emotional. We engage with our emotions. This is our way of saying, God, even with my emotions, I worship you. So we're going to sing this and we're going to thank God for the things that he's done. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance to the exodus of my heart. Cause you found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release. Oh, Yahweh. Cause you're the God who fights for me, Lord of sign that you are with me. The fire by night is the guiding light to my feet. Cause you found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release. Oh, we are Cause you're the Thank you, God, that uh, you're the God who fights for us. 
the God who sees us where we are, who sees us where we're going, who sees us where we've been. God, you see us. What a profound statement today. I know that there are those in this room that sometimes feel like they're not seen at all. That maybe they're, they're walking this thing alone, they're walking this life alone, they're dealing with the stuff that they have to deal with alone. But you're the God who truly fights for us. You're the God who sees us. And you're the Lord of victory in our life. And God, this morning we just take a moment to say thank you for that. God, thank you for the profound impact that you have in our life. That you're not some uh, fire extinguisher we take off of the wall to, to put out the fires in our life when only we need you. But God, you're, you're a God who we can have relationship with. Who sees us for who we are. Who loves us for who we are despite our faults and despite our humanity and despite the things that we do that you say, I love you. And Lord, for that this morning, we worship you and you alone. God, we give you thanks and we give you praise and we love you. In your precious name. Shall come. 
say that you're weary. And whatever your fight has been, it's been given to you already. God wants you to hear that you will find rest in his promises. That you will find confidence in his faithfulness. That's the only place. We search for things to try to make it easier. We search for things to get us through. But he has a promise for us not to hurt us, not to destroy us. So press into him. Find that rest in his promises. It's not something we have to beg for. It's not something we have to search for. It's waiting for us. That rest. faithful in all things. Whether we see it, whether we feel it, whether we can experience it, we know that you are faithful. So God, we rest in that today. God, be with us today. Speak to us from your word. God, and let us find rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you turn to somebody around you, tell them hi. Hello. Well, good morning. How are we doing this morning? You guys are probably like, what is that guy doing on stage giving announcements? He never gives announcements. Uh, and I know that's everybody's favorite part of the service is announcements, right? So uh, we're going to make it uh, quick this morning. But my name is, uh, first of all, welcome. Welcome to church, whether you're here or maybe you're online watching this morning. Uh, it is a pleasure to have you here at Whitefish Assembly. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Nick Clark, uh, and I've been around for quite a long time. I was on the, the staff, pastoral staff here for about 13 years, and uh, now I have the, the privilege of serving on the board uh, this last year. And so that's why I'm up here making this announcement uh, this morning before we kind of get going into things. But um, how many of you know what October uh, represents in the church? Does anybody, anybody know? we got a few. October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and... Oftentimes here, yes, give, give our pastors a round of applause because they are they're amazing, amazing people. Uh, but oftentimes around here it gets kind of uh, shoved to the side or kind of forgotten and it's not something, obviously our pastors are very humble, they're not going to say anything. And so now that I've been in those shoes and I get to be on the board, I just told them, hey, I have an announcement to make this morning and this is what's going to happen. So uh, I don't know if I just have some street cred with that or what, um, but what ha often happens, we have our auction in October, and there's a lot of things going on, but we want to just take a moment uh, today, and I just want to make you aware of a, a couple things. Um, we have some incredible, incredible pastors uh, on our staff. When you start thinking about uh, the, the size of our church and who we are lucky enough to have, um, we are blessed, blessed people with Pastor Sean uh, and Christina and uh, John Michael and Cami and Malachi and Denny and Linnea, we have a, just a kind of an all-star cast. And so what we want to do is we, uh, as a board, want to recognize um, this year uh, Pastor Appreciation Month. So here's what that's going to look like. Uh, two weeks from today, 
we're going we're gonna to take some time, and, and we'll probably honor them up here on stage a little bit. Uh, but we want to give you an opportunity as well. Uh, in two weeks, if you want to bring a card, maybe it's uh, a gift card or even just a written card, I can tell you that um, it makes a huge difference. And just to be able to tell our pastors how much we appreciate them and how much they do. Um, oftentimes, what you get to see on Sunday is just this piece right here. And this is a very, very, very small piece of ministry. Uh, what they do is, is a whole lot more than that. And I know that you see that as well. Um, I can tell you from experience, I still have kind of a box in my, uh, in my house somewhere full of cards over the years of just, thank you so much. You've been such a blessing. And it, it, it does more for, for them, uh, for the pastoral staff, than I think you realize. And so in two weeks, on October 29th, we're going to have some baskets out in the, uh, in the lobby. Uh, if you have whatever, whatever you feel like doing uh, out there, we're going to have some cards, just some places for you to just give, their, give your appreciation and give um, whatever you feel led to do. So uh, I wanted to make sure you were aware of that on October 29th. Uh, don't forget that. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. John Michael will give the rest of the announcements because I honestly don't know what else we have. And so I'm going to give it to him. So. Thank you, uh, Nick. I got to tell you guys, I grew up in this church as a pastor's kid. I don't know if you knew this. Uh, many of you do. Um, but I, I remember the times when um, the church honored our family, not just our parents, but also us as kids. And my, my parents would look at me and say, it's because you are just as much a part of the ministry. And to me, that was powerful. Um, the love of this church, the honoring was a big part of why um, I think I pursued the call to ministry. And so thank you as a church for being so faithful and loving on our staff and uh, and all of that. So hey, if you don't know me, my name is John Michael. I'm one of the pastors here. And uh, we've got a lot of great things going on, but I do want to just call attention to a couple things. I know Nick said hello already to those online, but thank you for being with us. I saw Becky on there on Facebook and a few others. Thanks for joining us. I love that we have people literally all over the world, um, friends in Africa, across the country, all kinds of things that are joining us online. If you didn't know, you can stay in tune with what's going on around here through our app. Um, we'll put a, put a little QR code up on the screen, but you can also search in your app store for Whitefish Assembly, and uh, on there you'll see some events going on, you'll see ways to connect and serve, and uh, we want to make sure you're aware of that. I don't know about you, but um, just showing up on Sunday morning, sometimes it can be hard. You tune out this weird-looking guy up on stage who tells you about what's coming up, and so you need a way to, to go in and find out more. You can do that through the app. Um, also on there is a, a, a card to submit for um, our Connect card or for our prayer card. So um, if you are the kind of person who likes to do things with a hard copy, also in the seat back in front or behind you, we have our Connect cards and prayer cards. You can do uh, fill those out. If it's your first time here or maybe you haven't been here in a long time, maybe you haven't gotten communications about things that are going on because we don't have your updated information, you can do that by filling out our Connect card. Drop this in the black box at the back of the room or the front door, and uh, we'd love just to be able to stay connected with you that way. Also, we are a church that believes in the power of prayer, and so every week a team of us gets together and prays for the needs that we receive through these prayer cards or through our app, and uh, we just want you to know we'd love to be praying for you. Whatever's going on in your life right now, if you have someone you're praying for, something you're celebrating that God's done, whatever it is, we'd love to join you. So you can fill this out. There's also a group of people um, who are a part of our prayer chain who pray over these for the ones that say, yes, you can send this to the prayer chain. So just know your prayers are not going to be shared publicly unless you say that's okay. Um, but there's a bunch of people, part of this church, who'd love to be praying with you as well. So lots of great ways to stay connected, of course, social media, all that kind of stuff. Um, but as a church, we've really been looking at this, this past season saying, how do we build a culture of not just showing up at church, not just being connected to the people around us. Um, I love the interactions that happen before the gathering on Sunday morning and afterwards. I love the community and the connection here at the church. But how do we also reach out into our community? And a couple weeks ago, I spoke and mentioned the, the question we've been asking ourselves is, if we closed our doors tomorrow, if this church ceased to exist, would our community notice? Would they notice that we're missing? Um, and so we've really been asking, how do we reach out into our community and do some things? This last series has been on serving, and there's a few ways that we're doing this. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what happened yesterday, but just coming up in a few weeks on October 25th is our Kids Fall Festival. And this is one of the ways that we love on our community. In fact, under the seat uh, on, the, on the edge, many of you have one of these. If you would, if you're sitting on the corners here or down this row, reach down and look for this um, and grab that because we want to make 
make sure that we pass it back through the rows. We have one about every other row, um, but we want to make sure everyone gets a chance. Here's the thing. We need volunteers. Uh, when we put on this fall festival, it's not just for our church. It's also for many of the kids who come from Forest Acres on Wednesday nights that we bus in. Um, many of uh, those in our community. In fact, we encourage our kids to invite a family, invite some kids to join them on this incredible festival. So there's many things that we need. There's going to be uh, inflatables, and there's going to be games in all the different rooms, and all these kinds of things, just a way to love kids and their families on, uh, on this week. And so on October 25th, we're inviting you to join with us in volunteering. Um, there's many ways you can do it. Um, next Sunday, we'll actually tear down the room to get it set up for the inflatables and things. On Tuesday, there's going to be a setup time. So if you'd like to come help with that, activities, helping out with the games, tearing down afterwards, whatever you would like to do, you can um, circle one of those and let us know that. And then the other way you can help is by bringing candy. If you didn't see, we've got a big trash can out there in the lobby that you can drop candy in there. Um, we just want to, uh, we want to bless families. And many of you know in the world today, sometimes people are a little worried about going out um, uh, during this time of the year. And so to be able to have a place to come that's safe, that's warm, um, that the people who love Jesus are smiling and, and showing that love to little ones uh, is a great thing. So we're looking forward to that. October 25th, you can just pass those down the row. Also coming up just around the corner is not this Tuesday, but the following is our mommy business. So this is a group at Whitefish Assembly. If you are um, a lady who's got little ones and you like just the opportunity to have some other ladies to connect with, uh, it's an incredible group. Christina has been leading this. I understand they're going to they're working on having coffee uh, from the coffee bar during those weeks, and it's just going to be a special time. So if you're interested in that, you can do it on the app or on your Connect card. Make sure your info's on there. Just let us know you're interested in mommy business, and we can get that information passed along to you. There is child care provided, so you get to leave your children for a few moments, which just has got to be great, I'm sure. Um, so keep that in mind. Yesterday, we had an incredible time with our first ever serve day. And uh, we were out in Columbia Falls. We had some here in Whitefish. We had some in Kalispell and a couple different places. I think we covered about six or seven different locations. And in a moment, I'm going to share a video with you of some pictures that we took from that day. But I just got to say, first of all, everyone who helped, thank you. We are building a culture as a church of serving our community. And I love seeing uh, everyone from uh, our oldest generation down to little Nora Reimer, who is out there raking the leaves. And you can see some pictures um, here in just a moment. But we had families serving together, like the tops. Um, we had some incredible, yeah, yeah, Nora is such a cutie. It was such a cool day. Um, and even despite a little bit of cool weather and all that kind of thing, um, seeing our people serving. Sean will share with you a really cool moment that he heard from some of the city uh, officials and, and what this has meant. But I just got to tell you, we received a card from Roberta Ross. We were out at her property yesterday, and uh, we had a group took took three dump truck loads of branches and uh, needles and all kinds of things to the dump, um, serving so faithfully. And I know Roberta gave us a card to say thank you so much. You have no idea how much this means. Um, she mentioned that it would have taken her and Bob um, months to be able to do what they were able to do yesterday in just a few hours. So thank you. Will you give a hand to everyone who served on Serve Day? We can't thank you enough. I'm excited to see how we continue to grow in this as a church, how more opportunities come, how small groups will begin to serve together and have opportunities um, during each small group season. Um, but I just want you to know you're making a difference. Whether you're able to be there for Serve Day or not, um, your giving makes a difference with our kids' ministry, with the different ministries of the church. And so if, you're, if you call Whitefish Assembly home, there's a giving envelope and a seat back in front or behind you. You're welcome to give that way or online through our app or our website. But I want you to understand all the things that are going on, you are a part of it, and your giving makes a difference. So thank you for your faithfulness in that. I'm very excited about the new series that we're starting today called Pitfalls and Promised Land. Um, and Sean's going to be up here in just a moment. But first, I want you to watch this video and see a little bit more about what yesterday was all about.
it really was fun. It was fun to just serve, and I, I got to spend time with a couple kids just a little bit, having fun, and it was just so cool to see them learning to serve. Uh, this culture, this generation needs to learn that, and so it was a lot of fun. We had a great time uh, doing that, and what, one thing that really happened that was cool, I was driving around the city of Columbia Falls with one of the Parks and Rec guys from that town, and he, he was showing us the different projects that, that we were going to do, and uh, he made a statement basically that said, we just don't uh, get churches that do stuff like this. And I thought, number one, that's kind of sad. But number two, how cool that we can be one of the first. And so what happened is it opened up a conversation about why we were doing it. And that was the neat thing, that we got to talk about how we just want to bless our communities. And there was a lot of, there's a lot of people from Columbia Falls that come to our church in Whitefish because that was a conversation. Your church is in Whitefish, so why are you doing this over here? I said, well, we have a lot of people that are from here, and, and they just want to be good to their community. And, and ultimately, and I even said this, we believe that God loves people, and we try to show that. And so it was just a, a, a great, great day. Many of you have asked about the results of our auction. If you are not familiar with this, every year, it's, we've done it for 33 years. We have had a missions auction, started off as a pie auction. Uh, now it's just a full-fledged auction. You name it, we, we sold it. It was so much fun. It's, it's just uh, a wild time. But our goal really was $106,000, which... We told you last week, uh, it was over our head. That was something that if God didn't help happen, it probably wasn't going to happen. And so we were, we were um, down to the last item to sell, to be honest with you. Uh, and, and we gave the total where we were at, and I think it was like $78,000. And I said, hey, that's cool. Man, if we don't make the 106, and wow, that this group of people gave $78,000 to missions and to rescue girls in India from forced prostitution. That, that is awesome. And then something happened that just finished the night, which, which it was great already, but this just put it over the top. Uh, and that is that one of our very own, and I, I have a picture here for you to see, uh, came up and said, I'd like to sell this uh, drawing that I did for missions. And, and I began to get bids, and we got the $900. And I said, going once, going twice, and then there was a voice that said, $30,000. <laughs> so just so you know, we are presently... Uh, probably over $109,000 for the project uh, at this point. So, uh, and I'm telling you, if you don't understand this, that is a big deal. There are a lot of churches around this country, I forget how many thousands and thousands of Assemblies of God churches, and we, and, and, and this isn't in a boastful way, uh, but we are in the top 10 of all churches for BGMC giving, and, and I mean, it is just an amazing thing. We had the national kids missions guy here. Uh, typically, the national office wants to send people to our auction because they've heard about it, and uh, he's already out there showing that picture and a couple others of the auction uh, as he travels the country uh, trying to motivate people and kids to give towards missions, and he says, man, this, this story is going to raise a lot of money. So just know that what we did here goes beyond just these walls. We, have, we are literally partnering with God to change the world. And so thank you for all you've done. Uh, it is good to have, seriously, one of my best friends in the world here this morning. Marguerite, it's good to see you. Hey, Tom, it's not bad to see you either. You're a good man. And 
Uh, we, we love you both. Thanks for being here. One thing that I love about Montana is that we get to experience all the seasons of the year. I don't know about you, but the fall is my favorite. How many would agree with me? I love the fall. You know, it can be 40, 40s at night and 60s, 70s. I mean, it's just awesome time. And, of course, the fishing's good and it's hunting season. You know, all the important stuff happens in the fall. And... Uh, but one cool thing is, as you watch the trees, some of the red-leaved trees are so awesome, and the yellow. I've been in so many places around the country that just don't get to experience uh, that. But I love the different seasons. I love winter. I love plowing snow. Uh, those that, that are, are in leadership here know that uh, I love to go get in our plow truck and just spend some time alone moving snow. I love the summer uh, where you can do play golf and, and all those kind of things and be outside and climb mountains and uh, uh, the spring when the snow melts off. It's just so we have all the different seasons and uh, like some of us here, I grew up um, attending church all my life. And in the life of a church, there is always high times and low times. There are different seasons, if you will, in the life of a church, of a church family. And we understand that we are the church, that, that uh, the church is all people around the world that love Jesus. We are the church. But there, in, in the life of a church family, like we are, there are different seasons that we go through uh, in my little church in a little town in eastern Oregon where I grew up. Uh, there was 800 people in the whole town. That was it. And so our little church was one of only a couple that existed there. And I remember in that church as a kid, there were times when there were 10 to 12 people in church and six of them were from our family and the other six were from one other family and we were the church that was it and my mother was the Sunday school teacher and my mother was the youth pastor and I had to sit in that with my mother as a kid it was awesome She's watching this, I'll guarantee, right now. I loved it, Mom. Um, but I remember those times, but I also remember there being close to 100 people, 75 to 100 people, and it's a little building that maybe would equal this section, maybe, and it, it was packed, and there was a season where the church was doing so well that we uh, actually started a Christian school in that little town. Uh, and I went to that school until my sophomore year, and then I went to the public school. But we, we built a gymnasium in this little town, this little church that at times were 10 people, uh, built a gymnasium that was for us but also we let the community use. It was really cool. We had a basketball team. It was, because it was so small, uh, our, our, our uh, middle school team had uh, first graders up to seniors in high school on it. Um, but we would, and then we had a soccer team. It was so cool, except for our practice field. I kid you not, this is 100% the truth. We practiced soccer in a cow pasture, and there were thistles in it. You'd be running along and step in a cow pie as you're running all the time. We were kind of backwards, folks, in Prairie City. Seriously, there was one guy that would wear logging boots and shorts to practice soccer, but that was, that was it. But the church went through this season that it was full and fun it was a great time i remember children's church was so cool uh, to go to and like many of you we those of us that have attended church understand that uh, like people churches go through different seasons 
There's high times and low times. As a matter of fact, this church has a history that has included all of the different seasons that you can imagine. And many of you uh, haven't been here for all of them. And you don't even know, truthfully, uh, the history of this church. And uh, we are presently in what I would, what I would call a high time, a, a, a fun time to be part of Whitefish Assembly. It's cool. We're growing numerically. We're, we're reaching into our community. We're doing a lot of things better than we've done them in a long time. Uh, we're not perfect, and we're certainly not as far along as God wants to take us. But we're in a good time. There's, there's not really, unless, it, and sometimes the pastor is the last one to know, uh, but I don't think there's divisions and uh, gossips out there about us and, uh, from inside the church. I don't, I don't know of any fighting among each other or anything. We're, we're in a great time. The children's ministry is growing, and we're trying to figure out where to put all the kids uh, on Sundays and Wednesdays, and what a good time to be part of Whitefish Assembly. But the truth is, it hasn't always been like this. Um, there were years where this church was just a handful of people in a small building downtown in Whitefish on 5th and Baker, and I, I'm curious how many were part of the Heinrichs days, Pastor Heinrichs, those people handful of people over here not many but a handful pastor heinrich's great man church pretty small uh pastor weaver came uh and, and john michael's mom and dad and the church exploded and went to over 500 people and we were having four services every sunday in that little building it was just a high time to be part of it uh, uh then that church that church family at the, in that season raised enough money to build this building debt free that is so cool and in today's financial culture uh, something that's very difficult to do then this church went through a season that was um, full of a lot of heartache and struggle um, financially had to stop giving to some of the commitments in missions, just a struggling time where the church attendance dropped. And then the church went through a time of repentance and healing and commitment to the Lord and rebuilding. And, and now here we are in a high time again. And even though the low times are difficult, they become part of the fabric of a church family that makes us who we are. Um, one of the most fascinating stories in the Bible is about a group of people that um, begins, the story begins with them being slaves and, and it goes to them experiencing freedom and finding a new home that was promised to them by God a long time before. It's a story that is a large part of the Old Testament in the Bible and actually it continues, the story continues through today. And as we read about the, the people of Israel and their journey to the land that God promised them, there are so many different <laughs> highs and lows. If you haven't studied their story or read their story, I'm sure most of you have, there, there were great seasons Seasons. There were hard seasons. There was time. There were times of prosperity. There, uh, they experienced that. The Bible says that they were fruitful uh, in Exodus. It said they were fruitful and they multiplied to the point where uh, the leaders of Egypt they, they didn't know what they were going to do with them. And so what they did because they thought well, they're going to overtake us, they turned them into slaves and they were caught in that. And then. Uh, as we're going to talk about, they experienced freedom from slavery, but it wasn't long after that where they fell back into fear and, and had to fight 
uh, people and, and there were spiritual highs and lows and battles and victories and defeats and times where God's presence was so close and times where they wondered as God left us. There were times when they were actively pursuing God and obeying what he asked them to do, but there were also times where they were disobedient and they turned their back on God. Just one season after another. It was, it's kind of like Montana. They experienced every season you can imagine in their journey. And the story of the children of Israel is one that we as believers in Christ can not only look at and relate to, but it is one that we can learn from. And that is our goal. We are beginning today a series of messages that John Michael told you we are calling Pitfalls in the Promised Land. Um, I think we can learn by talking about and thinking about what the children of Israel went through. And I wonder what it would have been like to sit around uh, a, a campfire with some of the people that had experienced the journey out of Egypt. And, and I, I wonder what, uh, what stories they would tell if their kids were sitting with them and, and say, hey, tell us about what you've experienced. There's times when I get a bunch of, there's people in town because we're a, a vacation destiny for a lot. There's times when there are people that I went to college with uh, that come to town and we put together little reunions uh, at, at times, usually one a year. There's different people here that live here that went to Trinity Bible College and we get together and we start telling stories about our years uh, at college and you do the same thing whether it's family friends whatever uh, when you see old friends and and the one thing that's kind of difficult is too often the topic of stories at TBC Trinity reunions is me and uh, I can't say that all those stories are ones that I would be proud to put in front of you uh, but we talk about the times that we went through there what would be the stories that they would tell that were their biggest successes. It might be the story of Jericho. Well, they'd say, hey, you remember? You remember when we marched around this city and then we yelled and all the walls fell and we won? Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, I remember this. Would they talk about some of their failures that they experienced? Maybe... A story they'd tell would be after Jericho when they were told not to take anything and this guy named Achan did and they were up against Ai and they said, hey, just take 3,000 men because we can beat them pretty handily. It's easy. But because Achan had sinned, the little tiny army of Ai uh, killed many of, of the Israelites and chased them out of town. What would be their regrets? What would they want their children to know about their journey? And for the next six weeks, we are going to take a look at the journey of the Israelites and, um, and how they traveled and the things they experienced when they were trying to get to the land that had been promised to them by God. And we're going to try to learn some things that we can use as a church family as we move forward now it's only going to be a nutshell and we're only going to deal with uh, a few of the hundred different stories we could speak about and talk about but we're going to take a look at some of the things they did wrong some of the pitfalls they experienced and we're going to look at some of the things that they did right some things that we need to repeat in uh, what we are doing because there's a journey that God has us on as a church. You are part of a journey that is more than about just today and being in this building at this moment. You are part of the story that someday will continue to be told about Whitefish Assembly. There's going to be a day 
when someone stands up here and says, Hey, do you remember the days? How many are here that were uh, there in, in 2023 and you remember this? And, and there's going to be five or six that raise their hand that were part of this. And there's three things that, that, we want you to, that we want to learn and to understand as we go through this series. Number one, faith uh, is a journey. There's ups and downs as individuals and as a church. Number two, we need to learn from the past. We need to learn from the past. And number three, we need to keep moving forward towards what God has for us as a church. I don't know about you. I'm enjoying this time, but I'm not satisfied with it. There's more. There's more that God wants to do in Whitefish Assembly. And it would be really easy just to sit back and say, this is great. We're enjoying this time. It's good. Wow, all the young families and the kids. But I'm telling you, this in a way is only the beginning of what God wants to do. And when we think of the story of the Israelites' journey, we tend to focus on the 40 years that they wandered through the wilderness. But the story began actually hundreds of years before when God made a promise to Abraham. He said, he said I'm going to make your people into a great nation. I'm going to give to them a great land to live in, and I'm going to bless them. And as time went on, it seemed... Uh, that um, the children of Israel, in, when it got up to the time of Moses, that they uh, almost gave in. And, and even though they didn't like it, they got used to what they were experiencing. And I'm sure that over those hundreds of years that they began to wonder, are the prophecies that we've been told of things that are going to happen that we are going to be led into a, a land uh, that the Bible refers to that is full of milk and honey, that, that uh, just a way to say it's a wonderful, prosperous place. And I, be, I would guess they begin to wonder, is that really going to happen? But yet, even though they might have gotten used to being there, there was a dissatisfaction with being in Egypt. They wanted more. They wanted prosperity and not slavery. But the journey that was about to happen was an unknown. <laughs> and probably a good thing. Because if God would have told them up front what they were going to face, <laughs> they probably would have chose to stay where they were. Even though they didn't like it. And for us to get where God is asking us to go as a church, there must be a dissatisfaction in us about where we are. I'm not saying in a negative way, saying, oh, we're not where God wants. That, that bugs me. When, when people say, oh, I'm not where God wants me to be. Well, then get there and enjoy it. I enjoy where we are as a church. We are in a great place spiritually, physically, financially, in, in a lot of ways, we are in a great place. But there's something in me that is not satisfied with staying here where we are. There are, there are lost people all around us that need Jesus. And we say it's not the, the size of the church doesn't matter. I want to fight that for a minute. Yes, it does. It matters. If a church, and, and I'm just going to throw this out as a blunt statement, if a church is doing what it should, it should be growing numerically. It should be. Not to brag about, but because people are coming to know Jesus. That's how we can grow. And that's why we are excited about this day that we're in but we're even more excited about the days that are coming we know there's more and i don't want us to get comfortable with where we're at god told moses to go to the king and tell him to let the israelites go and it says in exodus chapter 3 verse 17 god told moses i have promised to bring you out of your misery in egypt into the land of the canaanites a land flowing with milk and honey and after he did that, Pharaoh, Moses went to Pharaoh, said that, and Pharaoh got more cruel as he dealt with the Israelites. And God told Moses that before he was done with the Egyptians, Pharaoh himself 
was going to drive the Israelites out of their country because he was going to make life so miserable for the Egyptians. And he did that with the 12 plagues. You know all about that. And God continued to speak to Moses. And in Exodus chapter 6, uh, he reassures him when he says this, I have not forgotten my covenant with the people. I see the struggles of the Israelites and I remember what I promised. The Israelites lived their lives not only hearing about the promise of God that he had made to them, but also in a sense frustrated because they weren't seeing it happen. Things seemed to get worse and not better for them. They seemed to be in this pattern that was well established throughout the years of Israel's journey. They would often need to be reminded that God had made a promise to them and that God always keeps his promises. It was so cool. I didn't know that Malachi was going to lead that last song about God keeping his promises. I promise you I didn't set that up for today. I think God did. Because the first point that I want to give to you as we move forward as a church is remember God's promises. He has promised that he will make this church and our lives in, as individuals and as people prosper. This building was built on a promise by God that he was going to grow the church. And that's why it's here right now. If ever there was a time when we as a nation, as a church, and as individuals, followers of Christ, need to remember what God has promised to do, it's today. We look at our world and say, where is God's presence? Why does it seem that evil is winning? Why is it that every time that I think that I'm getting ahead, I get knocked down? And when God finally convinced Pharaoh to let the people go free, they were excited to see what they had been told was going to happen all of their lives. But their excitement was pretty short-lived. They left Egypt, and then the Egyptian army came after them. In just a short time, they forgot what God had told them he was going to do. Their eyes weren't on Canaan anymore. They were on the Egyptian army that was chasing them because they changed their minds and on the Red Sea that they were backed up against. And folks, I want to say this to you. When the world and evil seem to be winning, John 16 says, take heart, for I have overcome the world. When you're tired and beat up, Matthew says, come to me all who are weary and I will give you rest. When you're feeling abandoned by God, it says in the Bible that God tells us, I will never leave you or forsake you. When you're feeling unloved, you got to remember Romans chapter 8, where it says that there is nothing that can ever separate you from the love of God. God keeps his promises. When the Israelites were freaking out, it says in chapter 6, I will bring you into the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as your very own possession because I am the Lord. And I keep my promises. We must, as we move forward, remember God's promises. The second thing is this, we got to trust God's plan. <laughs> it didn't take the children of Israel long to figure out that God's ways are not our ways. God's plan isn't always what we think it should be. How many would say that how you got to where you are at, if you could have written the story that got you to this point, you probably would have written it differently? Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have written in some of the chapters that are in the book of my life. Uh, in chapter 13, the story goes that after a lot of convincing, Pharaoh let the Israelites go, but then it says that God asked the Israelites to go a different way that was longer and didn't make a lot of sense. He tells them to actually turn back and camp by the Red Sea. And then in Exodus chapter 14, it says this, Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert. And here's what God says. 
and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. What? I, are you kidding me? God actually caused Pharaoh to change his mind? Can you imagine being the children of Israel saying, Hey, God, freed us from captivity. And you look back and here comes the Egyptian army, only to find out that it's God that made Pharaoh do what he did. And God hardened his heart. And Pharaoh said, I'm going to go get him. I shouldn't have let him go. God's plan isn't always our plan. God doesn't always do things like we think he should. Exodus 14, 4 says, But I will gain glory for myself. Here's why God did what he did. I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all of his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. God knew what was going to happen and knew that he was going to be glorified but what, by what was going to happen. The, the Israelites didn't know it yet. But Isaiah, I love this, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. There have been times when we as a church didn't understand why we were going through what we were going through, but it has become part of the foundation that we have built upon the things that pastor heinrichs did and taught and the people he discipled are a foundation that this church is experiencing good times because of god has a way of working out his plan in his time we've got to trust his plan and the last thing is this we've got to depend on his power the story then goes on to tell about what God did. The Israelites literally freaked out as they saw the, the army coming after them, and they were backed up against the Red Sea with no way to escape. They were yelling at Moses and saying, Why weren't there enough graves in Egypt? Did you just want to bring us out here so we can all die? And they were going at him and, uh, and saying that they should have stayed in e Egypt as slaves. And Moses answered the people, don't be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And God pushed back the water of the Red Sea, and the Israelites crossed it. And when the Egyptians chased them through, uh, through the Red Sea, God released the waters and it, all of them were drowned. Huh. When we go through battles and hard times in our life, it's God's strength that will get us through it and not our own. He will do what He promises. His plan may not be what we think it should be, but if we follow it his power will make it happen and paul said in second corinthians chapter 12 god said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in your weakness therefore i will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses and then he says so that christ's power may rest on me and that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you, says the Lord. And I, this is the key, will strengthen you. But as we move forward as a church family, Remember God's promises to you and to us. Trust His plan. Depend on His power. Over a year ago, God began to speak to the leadership about how He was going to reset us as a church. Marguerite, you were here when that was happening. Before we would be able to move forward into what He has for us today, or for, for the future. And we've seen that. We are in a different place today than we were a year ago. 
the leadership looks different. There's small groups that are just doing some cool things. We're making inroads into the community. There are young families that are attending here. It's, uh, people are, are starting to catch on to uh, the principle of serving. We're excited to see what God is doing. And in the weeks to come, you're going to hear about some things that we believe that God wants to do in and through us. We've only begun to see. And I'm going to ask the worship team to come. And, and uh, Malachi introduced a song to you, to us. Um, that is perfect. I love where we're at as a church. I love it. But a year from now, I want to be different than we are today. There's so much that God's going to do if we'll allow Him to. If we'll remember that He always keeps His promises. That we'll trust His plan and depend on Him to do what He wants to do through us I promise you if we do there's going to be a day when if this church disappeared the communities of Whitefish and Columbia Falls and Kalispell would desperately miss us not because of <coughs> who we are but because of who God is so much more but we have to be dissatisfied with where we're at in a good way and press in to become who God wants us to be in the future don't get comfortable don't get comfortable where you're at spiritually I want to be different tomorrow than I am today. I want to be different a year from now. Ten years from now. I want the stories that will be told about us to be ones that can say they went through high times, but then there, there were low times, but they kept pressing in and kept moving forward. And God blessed them. I'm excited about the future. As we continue to move forward for what God has for us and into it. Good stuff. Good stuff. Why don't you stand with me? I'm going to pray and then we're going to have Malachi lead this song again. I just think it's so cool because it's what we're talking about in this series. And then we'll dismiss and I'll tell you what we're going to do after that for those that want to stay. We're going to have a prayer time after that and we dismiss. But um, let's sing this song together. forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance the exodus of my heart you found you freed me held back the waters for my release oh yahweh worship me because you're the
Just, um, I don't make private times very often, but would you just close your eyes for, with me for a moment? And I'm just curious today, uh, if there's someone here that you're still in Egypt. You can't say that God has freed you from Egypt because you've never decided to follow him or maybe you decided to follow him somewhere back in, in the history of your life, but you've walked away from him. And today, you want to make a beginning for yourself. You want to say, God, I'm choosing to get out of Egypt and to take a journey with you and to surrender to your plan. And I give my heart to you today. I just wonder if there's anyone, would you just, uh, as, as I'm looking around, raise your hand and, and catch my eye. I just want to pray for you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Anyone else? Father, you are good. You are good. And we surrender our heart to you. We want to take this journey with you. 
We know it's not going to be easy. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there, there's going to be times that are extremely difficult where it just feels like we're hanging on. Lord, it's in those times that your power is going to come through as you keep your promises to us. And even though we don't understand, we trust and, and follow, we want to follow your plan for our lives. That's our prayer, God. Take us to a new place. And we recognize in saying that <laughs> we need to get ready because when God does stuff, he, we know that the enemy will try to stop it. So we recognize that and we, we take a hold of your hand today and say, lead us to where you want us to be. In your precious name. Here's what we're going to do today. Um, I'm just going to officially dismiss you. Um, and let me say this. We all know the events that are taking place in Israel. And um, we could all give our opinions of who's wrong, who's right, what's gone on, and and even take what's happening to the scriptures and things, but no matter where you stand on different issues concerning Israel and the Palestinians and all of that, the truth is that people are being killed. Evil has happened. And I believe that the church should pray like we haven't prayed before for Israel and for p innocent people and that God's plan would be played out and that he would have his way. And so what we're going to do is dismiss you and I promise you if you need to go or want to go, there's no one that's going to say, oh, they didn't say to pray. Uh, that, that's fine. I'd, I'd encourage you this week to pray for Israel. But we're just going to keep some music playing in here. And if you want to stay and spend some time in prayer about this, I, I invite you to do that. And we're just going to stay here as long as someone wants to stay. And maybe you're going to want to get with some people and pray together and again. This isn't a time for you to share your opinions. This is a time for you to uh, pray and ask for God to do miracles. So you are dismissed. Thanks for being here today. What a fun day to be in church. God bless. We'll see you. Hey, everyone. I'm John Michael. I just want to say thanks so much for tuning in and joining us at Whitefish Assembly Online. I love that we can be the church. We can be a church family wherever we are. And I hope that you felt welcome all throughout this time. A couple things to remind you about is you can connect with us online at whitefishassembly.com. If you'd like to fill out a connect card, just go to whitefishassembly.com slash connect or slash prayer for the prayer card. And of course, if you'd like to give, you can do that at whitefishassembly.com slash give. Your giving makes a difference. We love that you are part of the family here at Whitefish Assembly, and we look forward to seeing you back here next week at the same time. God bless.